Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we have for you today. Bell County officials unveiled a new addition to the K-9 Memorial in Pineville on Thursday. A plaque in honor of K-9 Kane of Bell County Sheriff's Office was added to the monument. Kane was killed on December 3, 2017 when he was hit by a car after making a significant methamphetamine find while assisting another agency in a traffic stop. Kane was partnered with Deputy T James Talby after becoming a member of the Sheriff's Department on September 20, 2017. During the dedication, Sheriff Mitch Williams presented Talby's new partner, K-9 Officer Jero. The K-9 Memorial is a state memorial to honor all K-9 officers who died on duty in the state of Kentucky. The memorial was built following the death of Bell County Deputy Sean Percival and his K-9 partner King in January 2008. LMU will be establishing a second location of the DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine in Knoxville. LMU received approval from the American Osteopathic Association Commission on Osteopathic College accreditation earlier this week. In a letter sent out on Wednesday, LMU President Clayton Hess said DCOM at LMU Knoxville will welcome an inaugural class of 125 students in the fall of 2019. The school will be located at 9737 Coggle Road and offer the same four full-year full-time academic and clinical program offered at the LMU DCOM campus in Harrogate. LMU hired David Plundo as a dean for the second location. He will spend the next several months recruiting faculty and building a staff. The Bell County League of Women Voters and WRIL hosted their second community forum on Thursday. This time, the candidates running for Middlesbrough City Council took center stage. Each candidate who was present had the opportunity to speak on their vision for the city. The candidates were given five minutes to deliver their message. Of the 16 candidates, 10 were present at the event. Many of the candidates spoke about the homeless issue as well as transparency within the council. According to Kentucky statute, the city council is responsible for legislating the city by passing ordinances directing the enforcement of the city and transacting city business. The next candidate forum will be on October 25th at 7 p.m. and will include the candidates running for Middlesbrough mayor. Bell County deputies arrested a man on Thursday in connection with two separate incidents. 48-year-old Johnny Rutherford of Hewlin was charged with third-degree terroristic threatening after a woman identified him as the man who pointed a gun at her while she was picking up her granddaughter at a bus stop on September 6th. Police say the second incident took place on September 18th when another woman received life-threatening texts from Rutherford. In those texts, Rutherford allegedly said he was going to kill her and her family. Police reports state Rutherford was also exploiting this woman on the internet. Rutherford was also charged with menacing. He is being held at the Bell County Detention Center with two $500 cash bonds. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. Lincoln Memorial University will be hosting its annual Halloween Havoc on October 31st. This event will kick off the trick-or-treating on the top concourse of Tex Turner Arena. There will be 40-plus tables handing out candy. This will last from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. At 7.30 p.m., the movie Hocus Pocus will be shown on a 20-foot inflatable screen on the arena floor. Guests will be able to sit in the bleachers to watch the movie. Popcorn and drinks will be served. This event is free and open to the public. Now's a look at your community calendar. We're now moving on to your LMU Community TV News 5-day weather forecast. Saturday is looking to have some clouds most of the day. To start your Saturday morning off, the high will be 53 degrees with a 10% chance of rain. As the day progresses, the temperature will rise to 57 and some sun will break through the clouds. Looking at your three-day planner, Sunday will have a high of 53 and a 10% chance of rain. Monday is looking to be partly cloudy with a high of 60. Moving to your five-day, Tuesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 64, and Wednesday will be partly cloudy as well with a high of 62. That was your five-day forecast, but stay with us. This coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will be bringing you your sports report right here on LMU Community TV News. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, geez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? 
this food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? Like great. It's good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hi, I'm Dr. Shields, and I'm a physician and the medical director at LMU Medical Clinics. This is a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Influenza, or flu for short, is a virus that causes fever, body aches, and upper respiratory symptoms like cough, runny nose, and sore throat. It is transmitted through the air and can even be spread on objects touched by someone who has the flu. The virus spreads easily from person to person and is most active from October through March. There are three things you can do to prevent becoming ill with the flu. First, get vaccinated. The most effective way of preventing the flu is to get the flu vaccine every year. The vaccine does not give you the flu or make you sick. The vaccine may not be 100% effective. However, it does offer significant protection and lessen the symptoms should you get the flu. The CDC recommends everyone six months and older be vaccinated before the flu season begins. Number two, wash your hands. Stop the spread of germs and protect yourself with frequent hand washing with soap or alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And third, if you are sick, stay home. Should you become ill with flu-like symptoms of fever, sore throat, cough, limit your contact with others. Schedule an appointment as soon as possible with LMU Medical Clinic or your healthcare provider. There are antivirals that may be indicated if started within 48 hours of symptoms. Stay home until you are fever-free for 24 hours without over-the-counter medications like Motrin or Tylenol. I'm Dr. Shields, and this has been a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Welcome back. With the team's first four-game winning streak in four years in the crosshairs of the Lincoln Royal women's soccer team, the Lady Rosebudders welcomed the Tusculum Pioneers to Harrogate on Wednesday afternoon, the second-to-last home meeting of the 2018 regular season. Despite playing more than well enough to achieve an in-state South Atlantic Conference victory, Lincoln Memorial instead found heartbreak, suffering a one to nothing overtime defeat after a Tusculum 92nd minute sudden death game winner. LMU had surged up to 10th place in the Southeast Regional Rankings, entering the match with the Pioneers thanks to a dominant five-goal win over Mars Hill, a thrilling double OT triumph over Wingate, and a 2-1 victory at Lenore Rhine in their previous outing. The final score of Wednesday's battle is certainly not indicative of how the actual contest played out. The Lady Rosebudders outgaining TU in the shots department 19-8, including a 12-3 advantage over the second half. Jessica Crevero and Itzel Ballesteros, the two highest scorers on the squad, combined for 13 of those 19 shots, although there wasn't a single one to fall through. LMU just missing a chance to put the match to rest with just over 30 seconds in regulation sailing to the left of the net. It only took 121 seconds of extra time for Tusculum to reach their best scoring opportunity of the day, and the visitors converted it to end the day on a sour note for Lincoln Moyle, the Pioneers winning their third straight over the Blue and Gray. Now at 8-4 and four overall, but more importantly, with a 4-3 and three record against SAC opponents, the Lady Rosebudders must tread carefully over the final three outings of the regular season, having slid down to sixth place in the league standings. Only the top eight continue the season into the conference tournament as LMU tries to bounce back this weekend for Senior Day, hosting the Coker Cobras in part one of a SAC doubleheader, kicking off at 1 p.m. Denied their fourth win in a row in the most shocking of ways, Lincoln Memorial looks to right the ship against the Cobras in what could be the last match from Harrogate in 2018. 
And speaking of going back to the drawing board, that's exactly what the LMU Men's Soccer Club did on Wednesday once the Lady Railsplitters Marathon with Tusculum came to a close. Much like the women's side earlier that afternoon, the Railsplitters were stopped shy of completing a four-game winning streak in their last matchup the previous Saturday, a stunning 3-2 setback against Lenore Rhine due to consecutive goals from the sacked first-place Bears very late in regulation. Head coach Haley O'Deanna and LMU needed a victory on Wednesday in order to stay on par with the rest of the competitive division. And against the Pioneers, Lincoln Memorial accomplished their mission, reaching a 2-1 decision over their conference rivals thanks to a pair of timely goals and stingy defense. While total shot chances were both with for both teams were dead even at 8 apiece, the Rail Splitters capitalized on their scoring chances early, relying on the D the rest of the way. And in the end, it paid off with the one goal W. Lincoln Memorial managed to strike first on Wednesday in the 38th minute, and it was a new face doing so. Barton Community College transfer Julio Nato netting the score, receiving an assist from senior Victor Perez on a beautiful give and go. After riding that one to nothing advantage into the halftime break, Perez decided to add to his impressive day by collecting his ninth goal of the season in, in minute number 60, gaining an assist from Edwin Vaz, the Brazilian's ninth score tied for the most in the South Atlantic Conference. The Pioneers finally came to life just six minutes after Perez made it two to nothing splitters, although that would be it in terms of Tusculum's comeback attempts. LMU silencing TU over the final 24 minutes, which included two massive saves in the last 11 minutes by senior goalkeeper Caleb Cothran. Just 11 days after defeating Wingate for the first time since 2011, the Rail Splitters snapped another streak to the Pioneers, downing Tusculum for the first time since 2013, moving to 7-3-2 and and two overall with a 4-1-2 and one and two league record. More importantly, Lincoln Memorial skyrocketed from 6th to 3rd in the sack standings with the clutch win on Wednesday and will hope to keep it rolling on Saturday, facing Coker at approximately 3.30 p.m. from Harrogate once the ladies' contest beforehand has concluded. Now having won four of their last five and with the women's team looking to achieve the same thing, the LMU Sports Network will be broadcasting both matches with the Cobras over the weekend and you can catch the action on Senior Day through LMURailsplitters.com. And after completing an unbeaten three-game road trip with a four-game winning streak under their belt, the Lincoln Memorial women's volleyball team returns to the friendly confines of the Mary Mars Gym this weekend, beginning a four-match a four -match homestand across the next nine days. Since dropping their only home outing of the entire season against the Wingate Bulldogs, the best team in the sack statistically, the Lady Rail Splitters have been magnificent, defeating Carson Newman in Harrogate, then knocking off Queens, Catawba, and Tusculum on the road, in total winning 12 of those 14 14 sets to enter the weekend at 13 and 6 overall, 9 and 4 against league opponents, which is good for a third place standing in the division. Interestingly, while LMU was busy sweeping Tusculum for the second straight time on Tuesday night to grab their fourth win in a row, their two opponents this weekend, Newberry and Anderson, faced off against one another. The second place Trojans collecting the win, which dropped the Wolves down to eighth in the league, battling for a spot in the postseason. It hasn't been smooth sailing for Newberry as of late, taking on Lincoln Memorial at 7 o'clock on Friday, broadcasted by the LMU Sports Network on the Athletic webpage, with the Wolves dropping six of their last seven matches in total, although the first time that NC locked horns with the Lady Rail Splitters back on September 21st, LMU grinded out a win in what has thus far been the only time in 19 matches that the Blue and Gray has been tested to five sets. Lincoln Memorial holds a 20-9 record over the Wolves, having won five of their last eight, and less than 24 hours after a hopeful fifth consecutive win, the Lady Rail Splitters will meet Anderson at 2 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, the Trojans responsible for LMU's first sack loss of the year the next day after that five-set win over Newberry, sweeping LMU, in fact, down in South Carolina. While Anderson does bolster an intimidating 22-3 overall record along with a 13-2 sack resume, history favors the Lady Rail Splitters despite having lost their last three in the series, an 8-2 record against the Trojans win in Harrogate. And speaking of home success, Lincoln Memorial is 9-1 in 2018 when playing on their home court. Having equaled their win total from the entirety of last season thanks to this four-game winning streak, LMU looks to continue their upward climb up the league standings with a pair of tests on their home turf across a 48-hour stretch. The NCAA football season and the first time since week five that both the Tennessee Volunteers and the Kentucky Wildcats will be playing on the same date, having traded by weeks over the last two Saturdays. For UT and UK on the 20th of October, the biggest question will be how the Vols and the Cats respond back at home, coming off season-altering results in their last go-around. For Tennessee, it's been a week of jubilation, coming off a fantastic upset performance at, at then number 21 Auburn for head coach Jeremy Pruitt's first SEC victory 
victory and a big one at that. The Volunteers, off the strength of quarterback Jarrett Garantano's National Player of the Week performance, snapped an 11-game conference losing streak that dated back to 2016. And this Saturday, UT looks to snap another streak that is equally as long, welcoming number one Alabama to Neyland Stadium for a 3:30 kickoff on CBS. The Crimson Tide have completely owned Tennessee since Nick Saban took over the helm of the program, having beaten the Vols 11 consecutive times. And on Saturday, the 3-3 three three Big Orange will look to shock the world and slay the beast that is Alabama. The Tide making it look easy thus far at 7-0, reaching all their victories by blowouts. While Tennessee faces Bama as heavy underdogs coming off a big win, Kentucky was forced to rest last week following their first loss of 2018, a heartbreaking 20-14 overtime loss to Texas A&M in College Station, dropping UK to 5-1, although still ranked 14th in the nation. The Cats will hope to get back in the win column in a return to Lexington facing the Vanderbilt Commodores at 7.30 p.m., televised by the SEC Network. Having beaten Vandy in the past two meetings, UK may have their hands full with a Commodores team that has tested Notre Dame and Florida this season, searching for a way out of a winless SEC hole despite some tough matchups. Very much still in the SEC East race with Georgia taking a 20-point loss to LSU last Saturday, Kentucky looks to get back on track and gain momentum again when Vanderbilt visits Kroger Field. Earlier on in the afternoon, the Volunteers will have just finished off their toughest test of the season in the form of Alabama. And once the dust has settled at the conclusion of the weekend, the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series will have seen a drastic cut among the drivers vying for the championship trophy, seeing the field of 12 get trimmed down to eight, with only five more races left to go on the schedule. This Sunday, the green flag will fly from the Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, opening the Hollywood Casino 400. Last weekend at the 1000Bulbs.com 500 from Talladega, Eric Almarola seized the top spot not only in the race, but in the chase standings as well shooting up past Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick for a surprising first place slot in the playoffs. Kyle Busch and Joey Logano remain in the hunt as the bottom two competitors in the top five, while Kurt Busch, Clint Boyer, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Ryan Blaney wrap up the top ten. The latter two, along with Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, stand in the danger zone awaiting this Sunday's first lap on the verge of elimination should they fail to crack the top eight once the Hollywood Casino 400 has seen its checkered flag. Nonetheless, four participants will be permanently bumped from contention for the 2018 Monster Energy Cup title and you can catch the action at the Kansas Speedway at 2.30 on Sunday, televised by NBC. And that is all for sports awaiting the weekend, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is on the way right after this. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying... Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to go out there in the rain. Going to get wet. All right, here we go. Go! Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yes! So much fun! Yeah, children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett and have a great weekend.